Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. You know, after sitting today through a lot of sessions, I thought there's a there's an issue that I somebody sent me and says, common sense is not a gift anymore. It's a punishment because you have to deal with everyone who doesn't have it. And after today, I can recognize that, you know, that's quite a prudent statement to actually make. So just, just for everybody's purposes, you know, in the last uh, 20 years, we have done quite a lot of work. In the past, people like Philippe Klute and a lot of people helped us. But in the last three years, nobody is preparing any statistical data, and it's become much and much more, much more difficult to do. It takes us two months of a year to extract this data from websites, from information that people want to do. Also, all the other auction houses does not want to give it to me. I don't know why, but perhaps I'm in opposition to them. That's why. But we actually go, we got a team working on this, and then the team actually extract the data and we do all the major auction houses and then compile the data from there. And it's apples to apples. So the statistics you would see today I'm presenting is been over 20 years that we've done this work and it has quite nice trends. Furthermore, it is not my opinion. It is data that has been analyzed. And remember averages, and I always warn people that averages is sometimes misleading because it does take into account all the ups and downs and it's not a it's an average so you need to take into account you will see that for example buffalo says it's still three hundred and twenty four thousand average per, per buffalo and then people say yeah but they sell for 35. well over the last 10 years we've used averages so i have to continue using averages i can't all of a sudden take out the abnormalities because then the pricing was due so you would see that uh, the 2022 year for us as well as the 2021 year was enormous for the industry. You know, a lot of people complain about the industry, but from the wildlife perspective and auction industry is the best years we had since 2016. And it's quite nice to see what has happened to the industry and what, not, what has come out of the industry. We've seen some abnormal increases in prices. Now, some of those prices is a, is a, is a correction. You must see it as a correction in price. And some of the prices are just pure growth in prices. So some of the rare game, I think, was a correction of, a complete downfall in prices in 2018, which is now clawing but back. But some of those prices are just pure growth in shortage of demand prices. You will see some interesting trends in the industry when I highlight. Now, I'm not, sorry, on your table, you would see I sent, I print the full document. I'm not taking you through that full document. It's 132 pages, which they gave me 30 minutes. I would never get through it. So the detail of each animal is in the document that you have on your table. I've just bring, brought the summaries here today to explain, but the detailed animals you would see after 20 years of statistics of most of those animals. So, you know, over the past four years, the, uh, we really, really battled to get the data. I hope that our data will continue to be able to extract. And we really hope that the data that we present is still, uh, is still uh, reputable data in a few years from now. The pre-20 auctions were dominated by the major players. You would see a major, major shift in the major players. A lot of the major players are here today or was here today, but you will see there's a massive method change in the spending power and who is actually spending on, on the industry currently. Where in the past, it was up to 80% of the major players. That statistics has gone down to only 25% in these last two years. Now I have data backing it up. So if anybody wants to have an argument about it, we can have some nice constructive discussions about it. But the, the major players in the industry is only spending 25%. 75% of the play, industry players currently are spent by new entries in the market and game farmers previously that did not participate in those most expensive items. So you will see that data was quite interesting to analyze, and I'll show you a nice graph about that. So, you know, in the trends, when you look, uh, and it's very difficult to build trends because in 2017 and 2019, we have this 2.1 billion industry. We have huge prices of certain animals. And when you plot those animals to today's prices, you would see that the graphs are naturally picked in 2017 and then they, they actually has pulled back. The good news is that most of the species last year has shown some drastic increases in prices. So most of the species has shown massive improvement, and I'll get to those, those a bit later. You know, what was, was an interesting factor that a lot of people is actually forgetting in the industry is because of the drop in rare game prices, the prices of animals are now affordable to a lot of people. If it was 400,000 for a sable cow, it was just normal farm owners couldn't produce and couldn't buy it. But at 12,500 rand a sable cow now, you know, people can start to buy it. And, and the capacity of buying animals has hugely improved because we have a much bigger market base. 
You know, the rare game was very specific to, to breeders and was very specific to certain category of the industry. What has happened now, that industry has flattened and you've got a huge amount of interest in the market. And that's really, really good for the industry. And that's what you've seen in the market is that people are starting spending money in the industry again because it's affordable. I mean, today, it's more expensive to buy, to buy a kudu cow than to buy a sable cow. A normal, I'm not talking a 32, 34 inch cable sable cow. I'm talking about your run of the mill sable cow that normal game breeders have. It's more expensive to buy, buy a kudu cow than to buy a sable cow. Therefore, the industry has changed and people are actually buying sable cows and they're now starting to get hunt. People are hunt sable cows. Wait, that was unheard of a few months and a few years ago. So it's quite interesting. You know, what is also interesting in the industry, you would see that the total, uh, just want to see where the pointer is, you would see that the total quantity of animals sold on auction were the highest ever in the industry last year. So last year, has the, in the 20 years of information we have, has sold the most animals ever. Now, if you understand that and you think that our industry is in trouble, well, I'm, I disagree with a lot of people that says the industry is in trouble. It's not. How is it possible that we sold the highest number of animals last year with the biggest increases last year. Now, I am an analytical guy. In my analytics in my business, when that happens, I, I'm, I'm going, geez, that's great. You know, a lot of us are still negative about it. And I think we must get out of that negativity because the industry is in a massive growth phase. And if you don't see it and you don't invest in it, you're going to miss the boat. You are going to miss the boat. And then when prices go up again, you're going to cry, why didn't they do it? So it's important to understand, you know, the growth that we've seen in the animals and the growth we've seen in some prices. Now, interesting enough, I spoke about the industry chains. And if you look at the industry chains in 2016, the major place was about 68% of the industry and the rest of the industry was about 31%. That was on value. In quantities, the major place was about 11% of the industry and the rest of the industry was about 88%. That's how the industry was made up in 2016 when we had a peak of the industry. What's happened in the last two years, the industry has gone to about 50-50. It's now 50% driven by major players. Um, and this I'm talking selling, not buying. Buying is different. Major players are selling about 50% on the industry and normal people are selling about 50%. So it's 50-50. Interesting still is that if you look at quantities, you know, it's still dominated way, way by the normal game farmer. 80% to 90% to of animals sold on quantity does not come from the major players comes from the promise, the people that sells on all the auctions all the time. And you can see the shift change. Yes, we do know 2016, the turnover was 2.1 billion and last year was 406 million. So yes, it has, has corrected itself, but the change is, is very important to note. And when we talk to people and we say, what's important to understand about the industry is that they, the, 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 the number of people today that can participate in auctions and buy game are three times more than it was four years ago. People could not afford that. And therefore, the market that you have today that you can sell to is huge. I have, on average, 200 register order auctions, uh, people on auction, every auction. Years ago, we had like 50 if we're lucky. Now I have 90 online. I've got 60 on phones, so much sometimes. And then I've got 60 in the hall. But the, the number of people actively participating and buying an auction is tremendous. And if you look at the online, all of the online strategies, you will see how fast people be because people are really hungry to buy animals. Interesting in the dominance, that's just a graph of it. You know, the lines indicates the quantities of animals and then the blocks indicates value. And you can clearly see what happened with the values and the change in the industry in the last few years. So if you look at, you know, in COVID, we all knew what happened to COVID. And I think COVID was really, you know, after the crack of prices in 2016, 2017, then you got hit by COVID. It was just detrimental for the industry. You know, for three years, first you got this massive crash in prices. Then COVID hit us and people couldn't buy a game. And so when we went through COVID, since COVID has stopped, the industry has, has just an abnormal increase. And I think we need to see that in the basis of there's a correction in the prices because, I mean, we all agree, not a lot of say it, but we all agree the prices crashed too much. It was abnormal. I mean, black impalas, well, you could sell them, you could buy them at the same price, you could buy red impala. Now, we all know that's not practical because we just, the quantity is not the same. And you've seen today 
And you've seen last year that the price is actually starting to correct itself and that you actually have more normal pricing of what the things can do. So for the second year consecutive, you know, the, for the second year consecutive last year, you would see that the growth in the industry was about, I'll do, it was 23%, that's just a common problem. And this year it's, it's a bit more. So on the species that we've done, and we've done a lot of work around the species, and you would see that the bread and butter lines, and you know, there we talk about what guys want to hunt, the kudus, the, the blue villabias, the ones that in impalas that people want to buy, you can see the prices continue to increase. And you can see that even this year, for the first time, we've seen increases in the rare game. Now, if, if you take into account that from 2017, we've seen continuous drop in prices until last year. And in 2022 was the first year we saw increases, for example, in Rome. It's the first year in five years that the average prices in Rome went up. And that's similar to, to the buffalo. When you look at the buffalo prices, oops, sorry. When you look at the buffalo prices, uh, you know, uh, last year, the buffalo sales made about 30% above the industry. That's about 127 million on auction. on auction, And the value of buffalo auctions in last in 2022. So if you look at the pricing, you would see that the value of, of what buffalo was sold was now equal what we sold in 2020, 2010. So we now recovered to 2010 numbers on buffalo sales. So, uh, you know, a lot of people say, just that's gone backwards. But we all know that the hype of selling buffaloes at 167 million, I think, uh, you know, that hype has gone. And, and therefore, those things has, has neutralized and the prices has become, become more realistic. Interesting enough, if you look at the quantities, Impala last year was the animals that sold the most, 10,584 on, on, on auction, which was about a 27% increase. But it's still lower than 2015 when we sold 13,000 animals of Impala only a year on auction. So quite interesting. We all think that, you know, the price isn't there, but we're still not at the levels in Plains Game that we were in 2050. So let's just go quickly. And, you know, in 20, uh, 2021, I had to, the WSR always in, uh, invite me to attend some of these things and explain. And it was all doom and gloom. I have to explain 37% drop, 21% drop, 59% drop, it was just terrific to explain to people how bad the industry has gone. So I hope those negativity that we all had in those years has now gone into positivity because, I mean, last year we grew by 59%. I, I get it. It's from COVID. It's still a growth of 59%. And this year we grew by another 34%. The industry is back to about a half a billion uh, compared to, to uh, we're never going to get to 2.1 billion again. But the point is just in two years, we've seen a 93% increase in the growth of revenue on auctions. So if you look at the planes game market, it grew by 46% in 2022. And in, nine, in, in 2021, it grew by 94%. So over two years, the planes game market has, has grown by 150% in value. And then if you look at the rare game market, this year it grew by 27%. Last year, yes, because of COVID, we had a good chance, but a lot of that growth was mainly due to, to correction in prices. If you look at the claims rate prices, the quantities are 33%, it's made up by 33% in quantities and 10% in price increase. So last year, we did not see the huge increase in planes game prices on average, although there are very specific, uh, specific animals that actually grown quite a lot. That's, uh, you know, it's, it's quite a busy slide. But it's from 2001 is the industry. Now, that numbers that you see in there is the numbers that I can publish from auction houses. It's, it's information. I go to Volt's Uncle. I go to CPD. I go to Flay Central. I go to everybody. I take the data off. I try to keep the same players in the same year so it's apples to apples. They, you know, start game readers, sells on their own app, and they sell on their own Volt's Uncle. So I have to go to Stats app to extract from there, and then I have to go to Volt's Uncle to extract. But, you know, we do that, and, and we try to keep apples to apples, and you will see that the total industry, you know, in the, from the peaks to where we are now, and you would see that this year that we had a 33% increase in value, which was driven by 25% in quantity and a 6% on average on increases. Now, I will show you that some of the prices are much more than what that 6% 6 is. So total revenue, just quickly, you can see that graph in your system. Quantity of animals, you can see, we're not we're now the highest ever. 2015 was just the next year, but we now have reached the level of what we were basically at 2015. 
And then on average per prices, now remember, average per prices is average. You can't strip high quality, I can't strip 167 million buffalo out and I can't strip 10 million buffalo cow out. I have to consistently apply prices to animals. And if you do prices to animals consistently, ah, I'm too fast, sorry. Press the wrong button. If you look at average prices, then it says to us that the industry has lifted its head up from 2021, from 2020 to 2021 and 2022, that the average prices of all animals that we sold is on the up. It's not on a downhill anymore. So if you look, I've, I've taken you through that. I think uh, important just to note is that the revenue increased by 58, which was a decline of 2022. I mean, there was a decline of 58, and I think we just reversed that basically, but this year was a, was a real increase. Just a nice graph. Uh, it's just plotting the growth every year and the, and the deduction, and you will see what, what we use. We use trending, and when we apply trending, it actually says from this year onwards, you know, the trends were starting, were starting to come produce. When, when you do with business analysts and you lose with investors, they use this information to invest. When a graph starts to increase and show positive growth, it says it's at the bottom, it's increasing, it's time to invest. And what these graphs are showing is in the industry, it's time to invest. It's not a right time to invest because the industry shows that it's, that's an, it's an art. Very interesting on values. I mean, not a lot of people has this data and I hear people talk and they talk about data and I listen to them and I know the information is wrong because the data that I've got is from auction houses. You can populate it for something more, but that's the real data. And I've got revenue from 2001 per animal. Now, what I do here, I don't split between Black Impala and Saddleback and whatever. I just group them together because I want to know what the species value is, not the subcategory species. So this Summaries are based on species category, not on subcategories. And then that tells you that uh, if you look at the numbers, interesting enough, Buffalo is still 127 million, which is by far the biggest turnover. Second is Sable, then Blue Willow Beer is interesting. A lot of you most probably don't even know that. But Blue Willow Beer's values are the third largest income generator in the auction house of this year. Now that's statistics for 10 years. And then I just group, you know, I have to have 20 pages if I have to do all of them. I've just, uh, you know, grouped the balance together. Interesting, that little graph, if you look at the colors, you can see that's buffalo, and it's just a nice graph. I like it, some people don't. Then what I do is, because that graph was 20 years, what I've tried to extract is only the last five years, because I think last five years is a bit more compatible with those numbers, and then this graph tells you what has happened in the last five years. This was buffalo, 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 and that's what, happened to Sable, Sable, Sable. Quite nice to see in a graph. You can see how the revenue was stacked up year by year. Interesting on the quantities, I'll go to the next page, 10 years data. Here you can see that Ampala is about 10,000. Interesting enough, Blazebook last year. And, and the interesting phenomenon on Blazebook, and a lot of you don't know that, there's actually very little Blazebook in the bushfire, very little. What happened last year is just the need for Blazebook. We, for example, import thousands of Blazebook from the Free State in Northern Cape. We, we sold more Blazebok from the Free State and Northern Cape on auction that we sold Bushfield. Now, we are very transparent about it. If you go into our catalogs, you will see it says, Phil Camfinia, you will see it's Bloemfontein, you will see where it comes from. It just doesn't bother people. We still buy it. And the reason is, you know, they, they, they have accepted, when you speak to a lot of the hunters, they've accepted, they will lose some. But, you know, it's still cheaper to buy those and lose 30% and get them hunted because at least they can hunt them. So you, there's a massive change last year, been on Blazebook. I mean, it's more than doubled in the quantities. And I can tell you that quantities does not come from the bush. There is an enormous shortage in Blazebook. And then the quantities go down, et cetera, et cetera. And you can see, and you can see the numbers. That is in, your di is in the book. I only got 30 minutes, so I'll try and skip through some slides. I just think to highlight a few things on the rare game, and then I'll go to the planes game. You know, the rare game of the fast years in indicates that the trends of color in the market are different from the rest. So you've seen that when the market collapsed, the rare, the, the color variants were hit the most. Uh, Sable and Buffalo was hit less, where the average price was about 0.5% to 1% of an animal of the price in 2016 for the color variants. The, the sable and buffalo were about 5%. So people always ask me and say, in this downturn, what, is, what must we use as base of prices? 
And I, because every individual in South Africa has a different buffalo on his farm. I mean, it's so interesting. They asked me, give me some prices on buffalo. Then I said, listen, what did, what did you buy your buffalo? For? So if you bought your buffalo for 400,000 rand, today it's 5% of that. That's your price at 2016's prices. And 99% that principle applies. So, you know, it is important to understand that the prices are driven. If you bought a 50, Nyala, what was 55, 167 million, or got something, my figures wrong was probably. Today, if you have to apply that same principle, it should be 16.7 million, not 167 million, based on the statistical data. Now, it gets applied across things, and then people will start understanding that how prices compare to the top of the area to where, and if you want to understand your individual animals, think what you've paid for that animal and then apply the percentage. And you will be quite accurate, but you should sell it at 90% of the time. So you would see that we've gave that guys. And when I explain it to guys, a lot of the time, they will understand. So price for the color variance, 2 to 3% of the value. And I'm talking golden years, black impala, et cetera. And it noted that the prices are compared to repairs drastically increased. Black Impala prices increased by 36%, Saddleback by 80%. Last year on average, Golden Kremsbach at 71% and Livingston's by 33%. Now, please, that will not continue this year, but some of it was correction, some of it was the market just coming back. And, and if you're going to budget the same for last year, you're going to be disappointed. But I think there was a big correction in this year's numbers. We always said that Saddleback and Black Impala is too cheap in the downturns and that should be prices should be a bit higher. And if you look at my graphs last year, my indications was that the linear graph shows there should be some increases in these things. All right. So then when you look at Buffalo, Sable, and Roan, you would see that if you look 2016 prices, it's where I said between 5 and 15%. That's the, and just try me out and do it and you'll see I'm quite accurate. A lot of people say, ah, that's nonsense. Try it. How would you pay for it in 2015, 16? Apply the percentage. I guarantee you that's where you can get an auction. Try me out. And you will see that it's actually damn accurate. So then on the, the Roan prices in 22, for the first time, we've seen a 60% increase in Roan, 47% in, in Sables, and 63% in Sesame, and 69% in Rhine. Massive, massive increases last year in those game species. Some of it, please take note. Hmm? Yeah, but it, you know, the guys are battling to get certain rhino, and because of the rhino that's so battle, the price has gone up. In, in the COVID era, guys, and there was a lot of uncertainty, did not buy rhino. We, bought, we sold quite a lot of rhino this year at good prices. No, still not 400,000, but 135, 150, 125, you know? And that's come back from the 80 we were two years ago. So, yeah, it's gone up. These people buy a rhino. He was interesting enough, you know. No, yeah, for sure. We we sold we sold the most rhino last year in ten years. To give you some idea, interesting. Prices of buffalo. I think there's some people still going to cry on buffalo this year. Prices hasn't stabilized. Prices for buffalo absolutely has not stabilized. You can buy to one auction, you'll pay seventy grand for the buffalo cow. The next day. Go to another auction, you'll pay 35 exactly the same. No difference. And the market is incredibly unstable. And there is a reason. There's just still too many buffalo in the market. Of all the other animals, you know, they hunt, they hunt saddlebacks like anything now. They, <laughs> the white flank, they hunt. Every single species you see, they hunt. The problem with the buffalo cow still, yes, they start to hunt them, but they're not to the extent that the other animals were. And therefore, you see that they're still battling in the market. It's one of the most difficult things for us as auctioneers to give guys indications on prices in the auction. I can be completely wrong or I could be completely on from week to week. And it's just really difficult to do that. Well, it's cheaper than a kudu. Yeah. Oh, well, it's not the only ones. Red Arabias, Kudus. You know, I mean, Elon. When last did you buy Elon Cal for less than 15 grand? Well, if you did, you're bloody lucky. Last year, not a single, we didn't sell one single Elon Cal below 15 grand last year. Normal. Cape Elon. 
No, no, we know that. Yeah. You, you, you must remember one thing, right? In December, people haunt me for this, especially the, the professional hunters, because they want to know what the prices should be yeah. next year, right? So, and then, and then we tell them these things. And ask Mr. Henry van Asweg, and I warned him last year, he still had got his prices wrong. So, isn't it, Henry? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to, that's in the plan. It's just some nice graphs. If you want to see where the prices go, uh, in some nice statistics, I just want to try. So I just want to. I thought I would plot this a bit because it's the it's the key the key race. Key, if you take color variances out, just to give you some idea what has happened on the graphs with most of these rare species, you know, and you can see that that tells you that all of them are under. Every single of that species in the last three year has started going upwards, and there must be some very positive stuff from there. If you look at the values, you can see very similar trends. If you look at the rare cam quantities, um, you can, again, uh, I've just taken these uh, quantities and you can see that, you know, the we is on the improve. So I want to go to the next slide. This slide is uh, incredibly important. I think what you've seen here in the 2022 year is that the price increases for animals was substantial from the previous year. Saddleback came back. You know, during 2021, he would battle to sell a saddleback for three and a half, four thousand rand. Nice ram. This is just what the price was. This year, they were up twelve and a half thousand on average. So you've seen quite a huge improvement. Interesting one that you know we don't sell a lot of, but the golden gamesbuck improved quite a lot. Rhino explained to you guys what happened. Tetsubis went through the roof. You know, we had that lull portion. We were selling it. Tetsubis at twelve and a half thousand rand, and then it dropped to seven, and you couldn't sell it for seven. And they, all of a sudden, last year. You know, you couldn't get it below 12,000 rand. So it seems like the Tetsubis has come back quite nicely. And that includes females. It's not only males. And then the Rowans were very, very high last year. And you can see the quantity change. They actually have, there were less Rowans last year on auction. And there were less sables on auction last year. And that actually start to explain why the prices are going up. The demand's a bit, there's not enough to supply to the demand. And then Livingston and all of those. Interesting one. I mean, we didn't feel this. It was very interesting when I did the statistics. I think perhaps it came from other areas with itself, but we as in, in the Bosfeld and other didn't experience that. We actually experienced a massive increase in the cows, the golden cows. We did, that was our experience. So when I got this, I was surprised and I went to double check the numbers, but it was true. But I didn't see it. I personally didn't see it in other. That's national. Yeah. So nationally, it did have a decrease. I didn't see that in the bush. I saw quite, quite, quite good increases in the golden, golden, golden breeds, and Richard will, will comment that that's true. I'm not wrong on that one, Richard. All right, just round prices. I mean, in your book, I, I really don't want to bore you with too much detail. The nice thing is that for the first time in seven years, we see some round increases. I think it's very good for the market. Last year, you know, we were sometimes battle. There's nothing wrong with the cow, and you couldn't get 15 grand for it, and it was a good cow. Uh, this year, we start seeing it creeps up to the 25. And I'm not talking the guys that sell at stat, which sell, still sell for 200. I'm talking the average in the market uh, of the prices. Clearly, the prices that the, the game breeders of stat and those guys get is, is, is sometimes a lot higher than these. Then you can see the Rowan's prices. Is, uh, uh, strange thing in the market is that there's not a massive demand for Rowan bulls. It's not a thing that we get phoned about every time. If it's on a the market, they'll buy it. But I won't get 20 calls, can I buy Rowan Bulls? It's just, it's, it's, it's not as big as the other entries. So Sables, you can see, we were very pleased. I mean, last year, it was just for all of us, seriously shocking to sell Sable cows at seven, six and a half, five. Some auction houses sold them at 5,000 rand in 2020 and last year, seven and a half. I mean, it's just, if you think what went into it, it was in a boma, you had to feed them, the cost you had to incur for them. Uh, and, and then you get, that kind of price must have been shocking. But I see this year, prices are clawing back to the 15,000. It's still not where we were before, but, but it's getting there. And I can see that the prices are, are, are up. There, I'll make some notes for you. Interesting enough on the, on, the, on the Sable Bulls. We were always in last year trying to get 400 per inch and could get it or not. This year, it was always between 600 and 800. Sable Bulls for sure is up. Uh, absolutely prices are increased. You will not get a sable bull for less than 600. Well, except if it's 32 or, you know, very young, not a price. But if it's 38 inches up, uh, uh, old bull, you will get 600, 600 rand an inch. 
and then you can see you can see I'm talking about the 46. When it gets to 46 inches, there's a premium for it. You'll get thousand rand uh, inch. That's what the price is. All right, the buffalo prices we spoke about. Uh, I think that we are going to battle through this year with buffalo. It's my personal opinion. I think it's the amount of buffalo people when I put on my auction is scary. 300, 200. Um, so I think we're still going to see a bit of instability and then hopefully during the year we'll work it out and it will stabilize and we will be able to, 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 to estimate the prices correct next year. I, if anybody asks me buffalo prices, I'm very scared. I, I'm, I'm reluctant to, to commit to anything at this point in time. For analysis of buffalo cows, you know, we've seen the prices between 30 and 40. We see the young guys. I mean, the thing about this is, is we do believe that it's not a single cow should be sold below 30 because if you have to have spend eight to 10,000 rand bleeding that cow, I mean, your profit and your cost of animal is just, not, it's just nonsensical. You can't sell a buffalo cow with like below 30. It just, if you sell it, then you know you're taking a knock. You, you just can't sell it below that price. And it just doesn't make any financial sense at all. Doesn't matter if it walks on your open farm. Still can't be the price of 30 grand. Oops. Oh, very fast. All right. Then when you go to the planes came, I think last year we had some very good news. I mean, for, you know, interesting enough, um, a few years ago, uh, I spent a lot of time with businesses and restructuring and uh, in the tights. I'm a business rescue practitioner by profession. And, uh, you know, guys ask us what's going to happen in the industry and where we should invest the money. And when I told the guys, you need to invest in planes game, you need to invest in hunting, that's the way to go three years ago. Some of them were laughing at me. So it's just not possible. There's not enough money in it. Hmm? Yeah. 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 So if you understand now, people should have invested because, I mean, it, the prices is mad. If you bought little impalas, you know, a year out, and you put it on your farm. Today, you, you hunt them for six and a half. And, and that's just what the prices has happened. And the guys that's done the correct investments, especially in the plains game markets, all smile. So it's quite interesting to see what's happened to the market. You'll see the quantities increase. You can see the prices. Another slide that's actually nicer. That slide is just a summary. I want to get to a nice slide. It, it is, you know, the gra graphics is always better. Yeah, I've extracted only the, the, the planes game out of the, out of the analysis. You can see by far, Builder Blue Villa Beers is the biggest generator of income by far, followed by Impala and Kudu. And then if you look at quantities, you can see that Impala, Blaze Block, and Blue Villa Beers are still most favorite animals to buy an auction. Uh, we, we, we will most never have less than 400 Impala on, 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 on an auction. Never. Uh, it's up, up, down, they're in the, they're in the, Little bits here. There. 1,243 last year. An auction. Remember, this is auction. Auction. Only an auction. I, I, out of the hand sales, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. All right. So, again, you know, for the second year in a row, we see this massive increases. Nyala was the biggest surprise for us at all last year. You couldn't sell a Nala female for two and a half grand. You battled sometime to get 1850 for it. Last year, prices were up 6,000 females on average. And the prices went continues to continue to increase through the year. And, and that's why you see that Nala prices. And then the good thing was the Nala, Nala bulls, all hunting bulls went massively up in the last three years. It was that lull that nobody wanted to buy a Nala bull. And then all of a sudden, you know, people start buying Nala bulls. And the guys that hold on to it will just smile. Waterbuck, you know, in 2020, we couldn't sell waterbuck females for two and a half grand. They now, if you're lucky to buy something at six and a half grand, and you're very lucky if you get it at that price. The most improvement of two years is the blue villabias. I mean, this animal, this price has gone the most up, and I'll explain to you later why. I want to just get to that, why the price has gone up. Kudu bulls were still high last year. Zebra, for the first time in many years, has gone up. Uh, Normal impala. And then the interesting fact was here, but I can tell you that was very much influenced because the, the blaze block that was not Bushveld blaze block will sell for 1,400 and a female, where a Bushveld blaze block will sell for 2,800 a female. And because the quantum we sold from Feliz and all the areas has done that. Too. And same with red beers. Nobody can find red beers. There is no red beers in the Bushveld, and people are just buying them. But the difference is if you buy... One of them, a free state, it's 5,000, 4,800 rand. 
when you buy a Bushveld one, it's 15 grand. That's the difference. And by selling so many guys were so desperate to sell, to buy red other bears, you know, the prices went up. Yeah. Interesting enough, a lot of the animals are more impacted by eating, dying from thirst. So, you know, the question is, what was first, hearts, water, or, or hungry? Because if you change from, sweet, from the sweet areas to the dry areas, then the animal don't eat, and then because the animals go down, the, the ticks attack it, and then, and then it dies off. But it's because of the quantum of ticks that attack him because of what? we always said, you know, if you, can, if you can get that animal for the first three weeks, like a blaze ball, four weeks, and feed them or do something, you get them through. But the problem is because he can't eat, he gets hungry, and then the ticks attack him. And then he does get hot spot. There's no question. Is that it, that, that happens? I'm not a vet. It's just my person. It's just my personal experience. If, if, uh, if uh, Dr. Dawit was here, he would say, what the hell did they say? Anyway, just in good, important. I mean, those details you can go through. It's there. Then just, I mean, I just want to say again, the report I gave you has got detail per animal. They gave me 30 minutes. I've only highlighted the groups and the standards of the industry. If you go to the report, you will see graphs for every single animal. If you need to know specific like Clip Springer or Daker, which is not in the report, you're welcome to phone me. We keep statistics of every single animal. And we actually know buffaloes, buffalo cows, buffalo cows pregnant from heifer. We have those details. So we have our, our analytics, analytics is 1,700 lines of species that we analyze. And we use that. But it's impossible to present all of that. I'll keep you guys here from 8 o'clock till 12 tonight and to go through all of those. But if anybody wants to know specific animals, you're welcome to phone me. So I think the grains prices increased by 24. Everybody asked what's going to happen this year. I told the guys, I think 25% increase in prices this year is likely. Uh, and the reason for that is knowing the demand we have now and understand what the pHs are booking overseas. I can tell you that of the 10 pHs I've spoke, they're all fully booked already. So the problem is going to be, do we have enough animals for them next year? And the answer is no. We do not have enough bushveld animals. Uh, it is just not possible. Uh, we can tell you in 2016, when we, did came, we do came capturing and auctioneering, but when we went to a farm and catch animals, we will catch a thousand animals per two, three days. A thousand animals, two, three days. We are lucky now if we catch on one farm, 500 animals. I'm not talking weight and class, and he's got so many. I mean, when I caught there, we caught thousands. But the point is just, if you look at average, what we caught now compared to four or five years in the Bushveld, it's dropped drastically the quantities. And that's just the indication that by the drought, by, you know, the when guys went into the, into the color variances, they shot all the blue bulls. It was just interesting to understand how people shot the blue bulls. Now, some, some auctions, a blue villabier's bull are more expensive than a golden bull because you have less blue villabier's, but you have golden bulls. And I think there's some reasons for most of those, of those reasons. There's, there's still a massive shortage in animals in the market. We've seen it. I, I think I can put 2,000 animals on auction. I'll sell every one of them. It's, it's, it's unbelievable the, the, the demand that is in the market currently for industry. Buffalo prices, I think, is going to be under pressure this year. Hopefully, we can sort it out. It's the only issue in the market that is really giving us headaches because it needs to be sorted. And then the female animals, interesting enough, as seen at best year last year. It just seems that farmers understand that they can now put females on the farm again and they will breed and they will make money out of it again. So that, that you, you've seen a big change in the industry. So there's some interesting context to the price, price shortages. And I thought I'll highlight some of them, why, why we believe that there's some shortages in the market. In the programs, the guys have cut the farms like I did. I went one of these crazy guys and built five camps and cut my farm in half. And I had the most beautiful camps on my farm and cost me like five million. And I don't know. I didn't even know. But the point was this. I took that farm away and I put all the breeding farm on it. And I reduced my hunting area and I took off some of my animals. So, you know, that had a huge impact in the industry. And some of us still sit with that camp. Some don't. But the problem is we, we reduce this time and, and the value of the farm. And, and therefore, there's a lot less animals to breed. And that's for surely has the impact now coming out of it. The drought in Limpopo had a huge impact in the Royal Arabia's kudus, absolutely. Massive, massive impact on the two in species. And that's why we're battling quite a lot with, with those areas. One thing that, uh, you know, Sanet brought up, uh, the, part, the demand for meat has equalized prices. And I'll explain to you in the next slide why I said that. The, the, the 
the issue with the demand for venison has allowed any client to have an undercut on the price. In the past, when you, let me give you an idea. If you catch animals, a third of your price you get on auction is the cost. Okay, you know, anybody can quote you, they can tell you whatever you want. On average, if you sell an animal for a thousand bucks, it will cost you 300 grand. It's just a fact of life. The helicopter, the netting, the transport, whatever, just use it as an average, 30%. That's what you pay. It is now better to shoot giraffes than to catch them. If somebody, if I, somebody asks me to catch a, a giraffe, I will get 30 grand on auction for him. That's what I will get. But he will pay 10 to catch it. So he gets 20 in his, in his, in his pocket and he can shoot it for 26. So not everybody wants to shoot the animals. I mean, some guys are, they don't like to shoot them for, for meat. But that has allowed the market to push the prices up. And we're very happy with that because it actually has put real value on a lot of species where previously wasn't real value. You will not, you will not today buy an Impala female for less than 1.3. I don't care who you buy it. You will not pay less than 1.3 for Impala female. And, and you will see now, and then international hunting coming back this year has made a big impact on the business. Now, interesting to table, I just spoke about it. Uh, you know, you know, don't shoot me if your zebra is 140, 130, 120. I just took averages. So average zebra, 140 kilogram. Currently, the guys are now up to 25 because they can't get them. So if you do Venice, the value is about 3.2. Auction price now is 5.5 last year. So this was done before, before last year's average. But it means that the capturing costs 800. You earn 3.4 when you, when you capture it, and you can get 3.2 when, uh, when you let it shot, shot it. Very, very equal. Pricing. It means that, you know, if the, the Venice market has helped us hugely, I don't know how much they helped us in the industry. Okay. All right, there's the giraffes, that's the biggest one, and then Impala and Blue Bullabies. All of these seasons is in your thing, and the market second analysis, I don't think we need to go through that. It's in the book. Uh, that's just a bit of things that we said, and that's it for me.